Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. This is Waxing with Donisha, and I ain't come to play. I be waxing every day, different foods, different ways. If you new, hit subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Don't be shy. Come along for the ride. Why? Because this is the Waxer Squad. The Waxer Squad. The Waxer, Waxer, Waxer Squad. How's everybody doing? Oh my God, it's finally Christmas. I know a lot of you guys are very happy that Christmas is coming to a close. Uh, there's been a lot of good times and a lot of bad times. You know, we'll get all into that. Today we have some steaks, um, tenderloin wrapped in bacon. We have some mashed potatoes over some steamed fish with veggies. We also have some veggies back here and I have some mac and cheese right here in the middle. That's what we eating for Christmas today, you guys. So let's get into a quick moment of prayer. We're going to get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for your grace, your mercy, and your kindness. God, we ask that you nourish this food, make it nourishing to our bodies, Lord. Take out any impurities. Bless those that do not have in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's get started, y'all. I don't want my food to get cold. So y'all get the first bite. Guess what, y'all? My husband made this. My husband is so sweet. He can be so sweet. Mmm, so good. He woke up this early this morning because I was not feeling like cooking at all. So he woke up early this morning. Mm, 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 mm. And he started cooking, y'all. He cooked, I didn't want no turkey, but he cooked the turkey. Um, he made some mashed potatoes. He said he made some steamed fish. He made some yams. He made some veggies. He made some, mm, what else he made? He made something else. I forgot. He made, a, my husband woke up and made a bunch of stuff. Mm. Why am I box wobbling? Mm. Oh, this wasn't the one I was supposed to be using. I'm supposed to be using this one right here. Because it's plastic and it don't make noise. So, I really hope... I'm praying that you guys are doing wonderful. Who wants some mac and cheese? Oh, Lord have mercy. I really hope and pray that y'all are doing good. I'm doing well. Um, I've just been very thankful for everything God is doing. Um, I'm not going to lie. It has been hard. Um... Because you want to spend time with your family during the holidays. But in my family, it seemed like every holiday, the devil finds some kind of way to divide us and separate us, no matter what it be. He finds something, always finds some, some way to separate us. Just making sure that bad boy done. He finds some way to separate us every time. And it's like, I'm sick of it. And my sister. Mm, these are good, y'all. If y'all have a Fred Myers, go check this out. That's really good in this tender. I was right. Because normally smoked meat, it'd be already having like the salt in it. So I didn't add any salt to these. Um, the only thing I added salt, seasoned salt to, is the um, the juice I have on top. I made like a, um, I made like a sauce to go on top, and then that's the only thing I put juice in. So, yeah, like I was saying, the devil stay busy. And you got to stay rebuking him because he stayed trying to destroy families and tear families apart. And I'm just sick of it. In my family, y'all, there's always some drama. There's always some drama. I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. Um, there's a lot of drug addicts and I grew up in a family full of drug addicts, alcoholics, <laughs> molesters, 
all kind of stuff. I grew up in a in a very dysfunctional family. Um, I'm originally from Kansas City. Um, but my mom and my dad brought us up here when we were really young to Washington State. So I've been here for a while. But family is supposed to be everything. Family is supposed to be important. And when you can't get along, oh, my kids are here and everything too. So if y'all hear noise, that's why. If you if you can't get along with your family, then it's difficult to coexist or come together on the holidays. And it just seemed like every holiday that come around, we can't never get along. There's always something to divide us and separate us. And it's sad, but I think it's in every single family. And though it troubles my heart today to know that there's a bunch of fighting and stuff going on amongst my family. Involving me as well. Um, it just... Makes me appreciate my kids because no matter what goes on in my family, I'm going to always have my children and I will never have to worry about my children turning their backs on me or disrespecting me. So even though it's the holidays, y'all. You don't have to force yourself to be around people that you share the same blood with that you cannot coexist with. If you know that you cannot coexist with those with, with some of your family members due to whatever's going on in your home or whatever's going on in the family, you know you can't coexist with them. Don't like you don't have to be around them. You know, that don't mean you have to walk around carrying unforgiveness in your heart or anything like that. But you don't have to be around or subject yourself to or your or, or risk or subject your, yourself, subject your health, subject your peace to. You don't have to put any of that in risk just for a holiday. If they didn't respect you before the holiday, chances are they ain't going to respect you during the holiday. If you can't come around your family and be cordial, then just stay from around them. You know, you don't have to go around people that that disrespect you and disrespect and cross your boundaries. And I'm just choosing that. I'm just like, you know what? I'm like, well, this year I'm cooking my own food. I'm staying in my own house. I'm celebrating Jesus in my own house. I'm not going to nobody's house. And I didn't. I want to. I wish I could do that. <laughs> but there's just too much. <laughs> it's too much. Getting a call at 7 o'clock in the morning. Family arguing. What What is you doing up at 7 o'clock in the morning drunk and arguing for? What is that about? Jesus ain't even made it out the manger yet. And you and y'all arguing and fighting. About everybody else's business but yours. Girl. I can't. 
I can't and I won't. I will not subject myself, my sanity, my family to, to that nonsense. No. Not my kids. And the thing about it is that me and my husband go through a lot of things. But one thing we I could say that me and my husband don't do is we don't fight. Like, we don't fight every single day. Like, the yelling, the screaming, the cussing, the drunkenness. We don't do that stuff over here. You know, we have our arguments. We have times where I'll pop off or whatever. You know, my husband's pretty much quiet, a quiet person. I'm the loud one, obviously. <laughs> so we have our moments. Our relationship is not perfect by a long call, long shot. But I would like to think that our children are being raised in a conducive, healthy, functional home for their well-being. So anytime you, you waking up early in the morning, you're drunk, you're arguing, you're fighting, and you got your kids in the house arguing and fighting and drunk and mess, and mess that's crazy to me. That's crazy. No kid, no child deserves that. Deserves to see their mom or their dad drunk and caught, talking crap about people, mom and dad fighting. And I feel for any kid that has to deal with that because I was raised that way. Like I grew up in a household where my mom and dad were always fighting and arguing. And the only time there was any peace in my house is when my dad was in jail. I'm telling y'all, I grew up in a very dysfunctional environment and it's tried so hard to trans to transcend over into my adulthood. But now that I'm 30, it's like, I move differently now and I'm just not willing to allow my kids to have to go through that. That generational curse stopped with me. I'm not letting my kids go through that stuff. Period. It's nonsense. It's crazy. So if you don't have no peace in your environment during these holidays, you know what I like to do? Do something nice for somebody else. Make somebody else's day. Before the last video went off, I wanted to share something with y'all. I've been trying to make myself more available to the Holy Spirit. And to what he wants me to do. Because I know God didn't put me here to be selfish and be all about me. He put me here to love on other people. To care about other people. To help other people get to where they're supposed to be. You know. God needs a vessel. He always needs a vessel. So. I, oh, I already poured some. So, I was driving. I was at uh, the store. I did a mini vlog. So you guys, it was Winko, the first store we went to. And um, there was this lady. I got in my, I had my groceries. I got in my car and I got ready to go. I started my car up, I backed it up and I started driving. And I'm just feeling like a little tired, but I'm feeling like grateful. You know, grateful that I'm able, excuse me, to go to the store and go in there and purchase what I want to purchase so that my family can have something to eat. So that my family can have a good holiday. So I'm just feeling grateful and I'm just driving and I'm seeing it's very cold outside. And I'm seeing this. I saw you to see to my left, this lady, she's walking. She has her daughter. Her daughter is in or a little girl. She's inside of um, a stroller. And not that this matters, but she's Caucasian. They're both white. Um, not that that matters, but just threw it in there. So they're just, you know, they're in the, she's in the stroller. The baby's in the stroller. The, the girl looked at, had to be about four. I would say three or four years old, probably about four, four or five. And she's pushing her in the stroller. And the lady has a cigar, uh, a black and mild, um, smoking a black and mild. And that's not what triggered, like hit me. What hit me is a look on the lady's face. The lady looked distressed. She looked like 
She looked like it was just going to be like she was having a bad day. You know what I'm saying? She just looked like she was just having a bad day. And knowing that she was pushing that baby in that stroller, she's probably going to, to the grocery store to try to get whatever she can for um, for um, her kids or whatever. Y'all favorite friend. Y'all, that's you hear that noise? That's y'all favorite friend. She in the room with her brother, and she can't get out the door because I don't know he might have the door blocked, keeping her in there. Hey, what's going on? Dada's in the tub. <clears throat> anyway. So the lady just looked really distressed. She looked really distressed. And so I felt something grab me on the inside. I felt something grab me on the inside. Something say, go, go up to that lady. Go, go, go give to that lady. I just felt like the Holy Spirit tell me that. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm still driving. I'm thinking to myself, okay, what should I do? Should I listen? Should I not listen? Should I listen? Should I not listen? Should I listen? Should I listen? Should I... So I finally said, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to do what I believe God is telling me to do. So in that moment, I turned my car around. Sorry, you guys. I had to take care of my daughter. She went poop. Um, they might be loud. Her and my husband might be loud in the room, but I'm just trying to finish this story. And I'm going to finish this story. So basically what, basically what I'm trying to say is I stopped, I gave the lady some money and, um, I told her God loves her and I, you know, she went about her, she went on her way and I just felt so, you know, good doing something like that, trying to help somebody else. No, I don't have everything that I need. No, I don't have all the money in the world. But to know that I could do something so small, just a gesture as helping someone out for the holidays, it made me feel good. So that's what life is about. When things get hard, when life gets hard, because, you know, your family, you're, you're going through things in your family, you're going through things, you know, in, in, in your immediate family. When it gets hard like that, you got to hold on to you got to find ways to uplift yourself. You got to find ways to make other people happy. You got to find ways to make sense of what's going on because the devil comes to divide. He comes to kill, steal and destroy. He comes to separate families. He comes to tear families apart, you know, and sometimes there's nothing you can do to control your family. All you can do is control your actions and control how you respond to the situation. Choose to stay in a better place. Choose to stay in a positive place, choose to not go, but choose to not sink to, uh, sink to levels that bring you out of character, choose to choose to stay above, keep your head above the drama so that you don't have to degrade your character. You know what I'm saying? So I love you guys so much. I got to get up out of here because they're making so much noise and I, I really don't like that. So I got to get up out of here. I got to close this out. I will see you guys Friday. I love you guys so, so, so much. Stay safe, stay blessed, y'all. Have a blessed, blessed holiday. I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas. Don't forget to share and like and leave me a comment. Merry Christmas, Waxer Squad. Bye.